Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Fraxis Livestream. I'm Pete Murray, joined today by Anton Stringer, designer Howdy. on Sid Meier Civilization VI. Uh, we've got Nubia to show off to you guys today. We're going to take a little bit of time and look at Nubia and how they play out, their unique abilities, bonuses, units, cool stuff like that. Then we're going to jump a little bit into uh, the scenario, Gifts of the Nile, and show you guys how that works. So um, Anton and I both took a, a crack at the scenario, so you'll get to see two different takes on it today. Yeah. But um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at Nubia. How does sure. that sound? All yeah, right. let's do it. So this is a game that I started a couple of days ago. Um, this is from an earlier part of it. We've just gone into the classical era. Uh, you can see here uh, some of the features for Nubia. So this is their unique tile improvement, the Nubian Pyramid. Yeah, that's a good placement there too. Yeah, so the pyramid gives you food when you build it adjacent to a city center. Um, it gives you faith as well. Uh, so we're getting one food and one faith from it. Um, but then it also gets yield based on what the districts are near it. Yeah, so the way I kind of think about the Nubian Pyramid, it's almost like a district in terms of the, the placement mechanics that you're playing with as Nubia. Because if you place it next to a campus, it's going to get a little bit of science. If you place mm -hmm. it next to a theater district, it's going to get a little bit of culture. So it sort of uh, gets powered up with adjacency next to your district. So if you're playing uh, a game as Nubia, um, it's really, really fun if you're a builder type of player because you get to plan out where you're improvements are going to go along with your districts in a much kind of bigger way than ever before. And if you do it correctly, you can get these really powerful bonuses. So one of the things that we were talking about earlier was I've got these builders right here and there's this stone resource uh, that's situated here. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the quarry on it now for the production. But yeah. you were telling me later on in the game, like that's a fantastic spot to drop an industrial site. That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. So um, the Nubian Pyramid will get production if it's next to an industrial zone. So um, the pyramid itself can go on floodplains, desert, and desert hills. So right along that river there between Kerma and Meroe, yep. you got a lot of really nice floodplain tiles. And you can drop a farm on there and get some extra food, but if you have a pyramid there, um, especially if, they're, if there's that industrial zone where you just built the quarry, they're right. all gonna get some extra production. And it's gonna be close enough that your northern city um, of Heh there is going to get um, within six tiles and be able to get some of the industrial zone regional bonuses as well. Right. I love the name Heh, by the way. It is pretty funny. Um, this ends up being my Petra city later on in the game. Um, oh, I was actually able to pull yeah. Petra off on here. Yeah. That would be nice. That was pretty <laughs> nice. Um, but this also is cool because it shows off um, one of Nubia's other abilities, which are when you build uh, mines over resources, you actually get... Um, bonuses based on what they are. So that silver is worth a lot of gold. That silver is worth a lot of gold. And if we were to build this over a strategic resource like iron or aluminum, we would actually get additional production as well too. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, getting your mines online as Nubia early on, you know, seeking out city places with um, with resources that you can put mines over, and getting the Pantheon beliefs that power up your mines as well. There's a lot of things that you can stack to make that a really big advantage for you. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think here. In this game, I, I got my holy site online, and we'll see some some interesting things happen in the next couple of turns. But um, let's go ahead. I, th I think I picked Lady of Flood of Reeds and Marshes because yeah. of all these floodplains. So you get some extra production, production there. Yeah. yeah. Something else about the pyramid I want to mention. So one of Nubia's special abilities is they get just a flat twenty percent extra production towards districts, which right. is just great in general. Um, but if you have a pyramid next to the city center, like it looks like you're about to do, yeah. Oh, um, then that city will get another 20% on top of that. Yeah. So you can really crank out districts um, very quickly and power up that builder play style. And that's actually um, Amani Torre, if you're playing against her as an AI player, that's her agenda, yeah. her historic agenda. So she, you know, every city has a limit of how many districts it can have right. based on its population. Um, if you're at that limit, uh, Amani Torre is like, Good on you. You are building all the infrastructure. She really likes, you know, all her people being happy and having all the districts uh, kind of working at their max capacity. If you are under that and you're like, you know, busy making units or something like that, she's gonna she's gonna chide you for it and not be very respectful. One other um, wonder you might want to aim for if you're a mentor is the mausoleum. Um, because when you get those additional engineer charges, some of the later uh, great engineers in the game have the ability to expand the number of districts that a city can build. Correct. And yeah. the ability to fire that guy twice yeah. is is so you can just get even more districts. <laughs> mm, so delicious. Um, you end up being like, ah, I guess I could build a commercial site here. That sounds <laughs> fine. So uh, let's focus a little bit on uh, Nubia's unique unit, which is the Patati Archer, uh, which is, it replaces the regular Archer. It does. Yes. Yeah. And it is 
Pretty awesome. So um, Nubia already gets bonus production towards their ranged units. Correct. The Patati Archer is faster than a regular archer. You can see it's got three moves instead of two there. Yeah, so we can, we can zip all the way into this uh, into this jungle here. Um, so the placement of Corinth bothers me uh, because it's the classical era. I was able to declare war on Gorgo without too much of a diplomatic effect. Yeah. But you get to see just how great these guys are. Now, I'm not playing on the highest difficulty. I, I was joking, this is my Saturday morning game. Um, I'm only playing on Prince. But uh, as you can see, the ability to strike from beyond the rivers is actually pretty handy. Yeah. What I love about this example, too, is that Corinth is very defensible. It has a mountain. It's got two rivers on either side. If you're coming here with a traditional army, especially if you'd given Gorgo enough time to build up walls or something like that, it'd be pretty tough to take and definitely very hard to besiege. But, you know, you have the advantage you struck kind of like all at once very quickly and the Patati Archers, even though they're far away, you know, they're striking with 30 rain strength, which is five more than a regular archer. Right. Uh, which is just that much more of an edge. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got some uh, options for what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm just gonna pick currency because we're not gonna play this out long enough. So we'll just pick that. Um, you can see we've already got Corinth down to half its strength. Um, just with two Patati archers and my warrior beating on it a little bit. Yeah. Is a, so uh, is mistake of this, is, this is kind of uh, rough. So I was trying to get one of the religions uh, of the world going. Yeah, I noticed that Gorgo just got one. Yeah, she did. She finished Stonehenge and she uh. got the third great prophet. And then because uh, we've got Arabia in the game, they get the last great prophet. The last prophet. Which, is which yeah, so it's a six player stuff. game, right? Yeah. But so what I did was um, I had used my trader to go to Corinth just so I could build a road, just so I could send an invading army in there. Crafty. It was pretty mean of me. <laughs> I like that. I don't yeah. care. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to relocate that trader down here so that he can start uh, building that up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to keep pummeling Corinth here. Oh, it looks like Gorgo has sent an archer of her own. Isn't to, that cute? Uh, oh, yeah. Isn't that cute? It's a nice little archer. Yeah. Our um, bows are better. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why he didn't go. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, Archer, you say? That sounds that sounds pretty cool. You must be very proud of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and they, they get promotions much more quickly too. In addition to the production bonus you get for range units as Nubia, you also get a uh, experience bonus when right. you do battles and stuff like that. So they're gonna get promotions that much quicker as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll drop another Nubian pyramid there. Um, because Kerma is already growing a little faster than I thought it was going to, and had two retiles, I don't feel compelled to put farms on those floodplains. Yeah, that's, that's going to be that's going to be just fine. So we'll go ahead and we will keep pounding on here, and then that's going to be a pretty easy easy take. Now we've got an extra city. Uh, we've had access to these uh, to this ivory as a luxury resource. Uh, we can go ahead and we can get this wine. I've yeah. um, got a desert hill that I could build the, the Nubian pyramid on, or I could I could build it out in the desert if I needed to as well too. So that city is going to get its bonus. Yeah. Um, so I've got some good expansion room uh, for this going forward. And then later on, as I was playing this game, um, this kind of turned into a nice little insular empire here, um, and I ended up winning a, a culture victory. In fairly, fairly convenient order. It was a lot of fun. Nubia is a fun uh, sieve, especially if you're uh, the kind of builder who likes Japan and kind of that 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 district you know, optimization yeah. puzzle. Um, this gives you a lot of choices for that as well, too. Yeah, and some of our testers have, have noted to me too that um, they can actually be very good aggressive sieve early on as well. The oh, yeah. archers are just like you know such a step up from the regular archer. They are technically more production yeah. cost, but because you get the half production that you do as Nubia, you can actually you know have these archers be the core of your army and make a push early on. And we'll um, see some of that in the scenario as well. Should we load up the scenario? Uh, we can do that. Yeah, All right, sure. so let's go ahead and we'll do that for a second. So uh, the scenario is called Gifts of the Nile. And uh, we're going to load into Anton's uh, save first. So Anton, you are, so let's explain a little bit. This is a head-to-head -head, uh, two-player scenario. Yeah. Um, Ed Beach said to tell you guys especially that it is fantastic 
if you want to play it as a multiplayer uh, scenario From against a friend. Yeah, each scenario we try to do something new and different, um, both for single player, um, but also for like the multiplayer community. Right. Right. Um, and this is a really cool asymmetric head-to-head -head scenario. So playing as Egypt and playing as Nubia, you're going to have very different strategies. There's different things to explore, different um, map events that will <laughs> that will come into play. Um, so I played as Nubia. Right. Um, I got to play with all the new bonuses, and you played as Cleopatra. Yeah. Um, you had uh, a different experience. I think. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out. So it's a very kind of an asymmetric scenario. Don't so you're gonna, yeah. we're going to see early Nubia, and then we'll load into mine the turn that I'm about to play the game right at the end, just so you guys get a chance to see it. Yeah, so playing as Nubia in the scenario here, um, we have pretty much the same bonuses that we would have in the uh, base game, in the game. But, uh, you know, the rules are different, and uh, there's a lot of other things we can take advantage of. So. Um, this is where I start as Nubia. So there's a couple things to show off first. Um, down in the lower left corner, you guys can see. Actually, I'll, I'll point. Can that I point? Way. Yeah, it's, yeah like, no, it's, it's over here. It's over there. Right here. So, um, <laughs> oh, your hand disappeared. Oh, uh, yeah, it does that. Um, so down there in the corner, you can see the map of Egypt. You can see the Nile is actually navigable. So you can. Um, this is the Nile right here. Yeah, right? and the cataracts in the Nile, which were those. Uh, those waterfalls do exist to block boats, but you can put um, naval units on the river and sail up and down the Nile, which is actually uh, an important part of the strategy if you're playing as, uh, as Egypt. Okay, so now this is where you started yeah. as Kerma. Yeah, so I had my capital here. Um, okay. And when you start the scenario, um, just like in history, so the scenario starts, um, you know, like 1800 BC, I want to say, something like that. Yeah. And um, which is historically the time where the Egyptian Old Kingdom fell. Right. Um, so Egypt up here, as you experienced, is kind of in a time of rebellion, is trying to retake. Um, it starts with just one city as well. Yep, you start um, with Thebes. Start with Thebes. Um, but the rest are kind of a bunch of city-states. So I believe this starts as a city-state. Yes. This starts as a city-state. So you're sort of on this early military conquest to retake your kingdom as Egypt. And interestingly enough, you begin the scenario as Egypt with two Patati archers, which after six turns revert to the control of the Nubian player. Right, they were mercenaries that I lent to you. Yeah. And uh, when I get them back, they have enough experience to promote, and I get some gold out of it as well. So it was a nice deal for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it works out really well. All right, so, but now you're in this situation where you're down south here, and, and right. unfortunately, your starting position is, is pretty rough. Like, you've got resources, but you're kind of out in the desert. Yeah, so um, a big advantage in this scenario is to, like, obviously the Nile is very important. Um, the goal of this scenario, and we can actually uh, open up the world rankings yeah, here and kind of take a peek. So the people of the Nile consider the luck number seven to be extremely lucky. Right. It is both a symbol of perfection and a sign of completion. Literally completing the game by building your seven temples to Amun. Yes. So we, we win by completing seven temples to Amun before the time expires, 125 right. turns. Um, and we will earn the gods' favor and we will triumph. Um, so we're kind of in a builder race. Um, right. That doesn't mean that this is just a building scenario. Um, no. Military can definitely come into play. Military is a huge part of it. Um, in, if you were playing here as Nubia, you have to deal a lot with the barbarians, which are going to spawn on a regular basis out in the desert. Um, but if you're playing as Greece, and you'll see some of this later on, there are historical events that happen that you have to manage as well, too. Right, yeah. So um, not, uh, Nubia starts with kind of less infrastructure and like not as many juicy city spots. There's a lot of right. desert going on here. Uh, but <laughs> we are more insulated uh, from the sort of turmoil and the events that will happen up up north. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a little bit more room to breathe and to settle and to take advantage of my builder bonuses and really uh, kind of craft a civilization that has um, those seven temples. Another interesting thing to note, um, so you can actually not train settlers in this scenario. That's correct. You earn them in a special way, um, and that is from our custom tech and civics trees. So why don't you pop a, open those for a second? Sure, so you can yeah. see um, these are, these are the, the things. You can see we have uh, some unique uh, units that are here just for the scenario. So down yeah. under mummification, there's a high priestess unit that builds a single tile improvement. She's pretty cool. Yeah. Under Book of the Dead, you have a, a pretty neat unit, which is the Medje. Um, I'll have one in my save later on. But that, that Carl in QA, 
Yeah. Screen Peak and Carl um, <laughs> uh, says they're they're really useful. They get a very strong bonus near uh, a holy site. Right. So you do end up getting Swordsman later on, and not in the Civic Street, but in the Tech Tree. But right. you need Iron for it. And um, the Medje, you know, is only a little bit stronger than a Warrior. But if it's hide fighting near a holy site, which you know, if you're especially if you're Egypt, I imagine, and you're defending yourselves from invaders, like that's going to be pretty common. Yep. Um, they get a massive bonus, and they're able to like do a lot of work uh, to defend themselves. Um, so yeah, uh, the Civic's Tree here is kind of an interesting pick. So um, the Royal Dynasty's Civic here um, unlocks the two special governments in the game, Kandake and Pharaoh. Yep. Um, they both have the same amount of slots, yep. but they have slightly different um, bonuses. Yeah, for the benefit of uh, everybody who's trying to screenshot this right now, why don't you hover over Kandake for All a right, second? Yeah, so here's Kandake. So you get a little bit more trade mm -hmm. and um, discounts on gold purchases. Okay. Um, and then Pharaoh, which is actually the one I went with, even though it's ahistorical for new. I yep, yep. Um, you, your capital gets better yields, and you get two housing with any city with a holy site, which is going to be most of my most cities. Most of your cities, yeah. Um, yeah, if I'm doing my job right. Um, and then we have some uh, custom uh, social policies. These two are the same as the base game, helping with the uh, city states. But later on, we get some really interesting ones. Um, there are, for example, oh, record keeping, yeah. um, which gives a, in, uh, military communication. Military which communication is pretty cool too. Bumps to, to, yeah, bumps yeah. the movement for all land units, which is pretty cool. Um, hop out a little bit to the right. We'll see some sure. ones there. So, um, and you can see uh, the, the different things are flagged as well too. So we'll get one uh, a settler on institution of the muses. Uh, or, or, I think or, this one gives an envoy. Uh, this one gives oh, sorry. a sorry. Yeah. So the different civics will do different things. And actually, I'm going to just briefly go back here. It's actually an interesting choice on your first turn. Like, what do I go for? I end up going for mummification uh, because it gives me a holy site, which I knew I wanted to get online very early. Right. Um, but it also lets me add a belief to the religion, which is a big deal. I can show that off next. But okay. yeah, there are many um, very powerful social policies to get later on. Um, yeah, conscription. Frontier Fortresses is really cool. It's like really powers up your trade routes. Museum. Yep. This one, I, I that, think you made big use of, right? I did. Um, and that was, actually I, I made uh, use of a slightly different one, which gives you um, additional science if there's a river nearby. Ah, so, yeah, that is also a Let's good go ahead and close this out. So go ahead and take us through a few turns, because uh, you sure. get to see some of the random events that happen through this. So All right. So, um, so my plan right now is um, I have a settler on the way right. for my royal dynasties. And what I really want to do is I want to put it up here. Okay. Um, so holy sites have slightly different adjacency rules in this scenario. Um, instead of getting uh, extra faith from nearby mountains and forest, uh, which as you'll notice, there's not much of, especially for me. <laughs> yeah. um, there's some mountains up here, but um, they actually get faith, uh, one faith for each uh, tile of the Nile they are adjacent to. Right. So right here, uh, this is actually getting one, two, three, four, four faith, yep. and I'm, I'm about to finish constructing it next turn. Um, so I want a settler up here because like this is a, this is a five faith one right here. There's a five really faith great. one if you go north of that too. So. There's one right here. Um, when I was playing earlier, I think it's actually a floodplains though. So as oh. Nubia, I can't build there. If I was Egypt, my special ability would let me. But yep. yeah, I have to put it like here or like here or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, let me play a few turns. Sure. So um, I want to clear this area out because that's where my next city is going to be. So I'm gonna. Um, also, all the, all the units have higher movement because it's yes. such a big map, um, so you can kind of get around more quickly and explore the desert and stuff like that. Uh, which ends up, which ends up, oh, it is flip plane. Look at that. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> I was very dismayed to learn that, yeah. yeah. And then you can really see with the scout here just how far that range yeah. goes. Yeah, and um, early on, the, the map starts with all these roads going everywhere, so you can kind of follow the roads. They give you a little bit of movement bus, bonus, and you can find city-states. And city-states um, are pretty important in this game, too. Um, they'll give you a lot of bonuses, like the religious one, obviously, is very good. Definitely. Um, because the faith will help you. Uh, the, the holy site buildings that you need to build to win can only be purchased with faith. And we'll see that next turn as you get the holy site underway, because you've got enough to build the first, uh, the first yeah, one. Yeah, I just crossed 100. All shoot right, so shoot that. What? Well, I'm gonna oh, yeah, run away and then shoot. I'm gonna shoot. kite it yeah. from my MMO days. Because <laughs> my range is better. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got a slinger up here that's kind of in trouble, so I'm gonna run away. Yeah. <laughs> and then just promote and kind of hang out. Uh, so that that's a scientific city state yes. right now. Yeah. And uh, this Mediterranean area ends up being kind of a uh, a conflict zone very quickly um, as as different. Historical groups move in and invade. We'll see some of that as we keep going on. Yeah. Can you just whisper where the next civilization will be from? Planet Earth. 
I, I don't believe we're cleared to talk about that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, you've just completed your holy site. You've had one of these events of the game fire off. Yeah. So you get your first high priestess. Yeah. We have a lot of really great custom artwork for when these things happen. Some of them are based on, you know, like I built my first holy site. Other ones are kind of, you know, historically timed invasions and such. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I get a free high priestess out of this, which is great. Too bad um, you can't build anything yet. Yeah, masonry, still. yeah, masonry is on the way, which will unlock my pyramid, and I want to place a pyramid here because mm -hmm. um, that'll be next to my city center, and I'll also get an extra faith out of it. So I'm yep. just gonna kind of park the priestess here for now. Yep. Um, I got a spearman, so I'll just kind of move them up here to reinforce. Um, I will, let's see, maybe do a builder for uh, when I get the, the new city up there. Yep. I'll keep my scout exploring. I'm oh, actually... Um, you don't have embarkation yet, so that, that's going to be a pain in the yeah. rear. That yeah, so, camp. Yeah, this, this might be some trouble. Um, another thing I want to talk about too, uh, so the Pantheon beliefs in this scenario are actually very powerful, and that was one of the reasons why I went for the um, mummification early on. Yep. Because um, I get a free belief. Again, it's not earned through uh, profits or faith or anything like that. Faith is just for purchasing, uh, which actually, let me go ahead and do that now before I forget. Yeah. So I can purchase my obelisk because I have 100 faith. Yep. So that gives me two culture and two faith. The two faith, though, is not normal. So I, because I oh. rushed mummification, oh. <coughs> I uh, was able to recruit the god of mummification Whoa. to my Nubian god's Whoa. pantheon. That's amazing. Yeah, so okay. as, as, you know, as the Nubian god's pantheon, I mm -hmm. get an extra improvement from builders, which is pretty slick, but also I was able to nab this belief that I really wanted, which is all holy site buildings, which normally give faith, uh, give culture, will also give two faith. So yep. that's going to help me get more holy site buildings. It's just a good time all around. Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of really cool and powerful uh, religious beliefs. Why? Exactly. Why did? What made you choose a Montoya as a Nubia's leader? Because she's kind of awesome. Um, yeah. Historically, she's uh, she's a very strong queen of Nubia, um, and she was queen at a time when Nubia was undergoing a huge um, internal development and internal program of building, and so that fits very well with her agenda and her style as a leader who uh, gets a lot of districts, gets them online. Yeah, we really liked the idea of her as a sort of infrastructure-focused building leader, and that, that was very much historically who she was. Yep. And, you know, we don't know a whole lot about her. The record is sparse, but she did a lot of really cool things and just seemed like a great character. And she is responsible for building all these different pyramids and palaces, and so having the pyramid be her special improvement made a lot of sense as well. Yeah. How is he getting so much movement? Movement is buffed in this scenario. It um, is. I just, believe it's doubled in most cases. It yeah. depends on the unit. Which, let me tell you, the Marianu Chariot Archer becomes amazing <laughs> when you double its movement. I bet it does, yeah. It's pretty great. So even though I have the two Patati Archers from my Mercenary event, I actually haven't researched the tech uh, to train my own yet. So I still have some Slingers, but eventually I will be able to upgrade my Slingers to the Patati Archers, and it's going to be a good old time. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I discovered a city state down yeah, here. Yeah, I think earlier. there's I think there's still one down there. Or no? actually, yeah. Oh yeah, Oh no. Still, okay, yeah. RM, yeah. That's right. I thought this guy was that guy. The desert uh, is so big, I get lost, it's man. It's so huge. Jebel Barkal, somebody is asking about that as the new wonder. Right. Uh, that actually provides uh, faith for um, cities within six tiles of it. I think is the way that one works. Yeah, it's kind of got a regional effect, yeah. Yeah, um, and you can only build it on desert hills. I believe I so. Say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I built it later on, but it was only to deny the Nubian AI the right to build it, which is a little bit cranky of me, but I don't care. Oh, another uh, kind of fun his historical part of the scenario is, um, well, you're... Egyptian empires kind of crumbled up here, but um, you do technically have the pyramids up here. This city well, state, this city state does, <laughs> which used to be part of the Egyptian empire, yeah, yeah, has built the pyramids, so that's cool. Which, um, with the first time I played it, I didn't know that happened, and so like on turn two, it's like I, another civilization has built the wonder of the pyramids. I was like, what? How could they? How could they possibly? Then, yeah, Ed, what is this? It's like, oh, it's part of the design. Never mind, disregard. mountains over here. So I believe next turn something dramatic happens. Well, you're pretty close to... Uh, I almost got my settler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's your builder. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so I got a builder. I do want to send them up here to improve the city, but I think while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and plop a farm on the floodplains. Sure. 
because you're that's actually a pretty small city. Yeah, it's it's having some growth issues because I've been focusing on holy site and other things. I don't even know if I built a granary. No, I did build a granary. Mm -hmm. But it took me a while to get that online. I'll build another slinger. Build another slinger, you can upgrade it later. Yeah. Oh, you got enough gold. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good gold, oh. yeah. Okay, so, so go ahead and we'll click through the Eurekas. Yeah. You get your government. Right on. And then and here's the big thing. The Hyksos invade. So this is pretty cool. This is the first of a series of events where foreign invaders will arrive. Uh, the Sea Peoples are the first. And what's going to happen is a whole bunch of units are going to spawn in the um, kind of the north part. They're more of a problem for Egypt because you're going to have these, uh, these armies start to show up. And they're going to try to conquer cities uh, kind of in the north area there, which, mm -hmm. is, uh, which is pretty awesome. It sort of gives you a clue down here. This is their objective. And this right. is the kind of thing that the AI is going to go for. Yep. Yeah, so they have popped up. They are now here on our little banner. So we're reminded, okay, there's some extra opponents in the game now. Yep. Uh, we were declared war on, which triggered a tech boost for us, which is kind of nice. Yep. Um, and yeah, our civic completed, which is great. So I got and our- You've got your settler. Got our settler. So I'm going to bring, so I discussed this a little bit earlier. Um, when I played this earlier, I settled right here. And then I eventually bought my way over here for a uh, five faith holy site. Um, it would be great here, but uh, I'm not Egypt. I can't play any more plans, <laughs> unfortunately. Hacks. Um, but, and again, as Nubia, like mines are going to be very cool. So, uh, you know, the gold ore here, the iron is very nice. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to risk a city that wouldn't have much food, but might have a lot of other things, this is a, a literal gold mine over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was talking to one of our testers, and he had great success with um, placing a city here, getting a bunch of production and gold from the mines, and, um, you know, able to sustain it through trade routes uh, to keep it fed. That's about the only way you're going to do that, though. I mean, there isn't even an oasis out there for, for the housing. Right, yeah, the, really the fresh rough. water would be yeah. problematic as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring the settler up there. Yep. Uh, I will choose some hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. Uh, and then pick, on standby. Yeah, pick a new government, too. Right on. So here, we get to upgrade to our either Pharaoh or Kandake. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Kandake because I am Nubia. I, I did Pharaoh earlier and that was nice, but um, I actually was missing out on the trade route. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the trade routes this time. Yep. Maybe and I then, can do that strategy with the city in the desert. And then you're ramping up enough gold fast enough that you can buy units if you need to as well. Yeah, too. I am doing pretty good on the gold. I think uh, some of the city states I met, I have an advantage from that for the first envoy. So here we get another kind of peek at some of our um, some of our policies. So the Royal Barty Guards I had slotted early, even though it's a militaristic policy, um, it's giving culture in the capital, which is nice for getting through the Civic Street, which again is tied to our settlers and things like that. I like Scorpion King. Scorpion King is also pretty sweet, uh, both for the name and for the combat strength for all your units. Yep. Um, our inundation calendar will give yep. science for every city next to a water tower, so like, I'm gonna grab that one. So people are asking about the gold resource. That's just uh, a resource, a luxury resource in this scenario. Correct, yeah. It's a special custom resource um, that we've added um, and it looks really shiny and I like it. Because <laughs> historically, yeah, Nubia um, controlled a lot of the gold trade. Um, yes. And that was a, a great source of power. Um, a lot of their mines and, you know, just kind of trading throughout the region. That's one of the reasons they were so valuable to Egypt. And Egypt fought them a bunch of times and vice versa. Right. And uh, people notice the, the special desert mountains, which is very cool. Ah, yes, yes. We have, uh, yeah, several sort of graphical improvements that we're always making. Yeah, so we... We can, they might be in the full fog up here, but... Uh, yeah, they're yeah. actually, when you get up to, like, um, Oh, yeah, my scout Arabia. was up here. Yeah. Move you down here. Yeah, take a look, guys. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, um, I really like how they turned too. out. Yeah, yeah. They, they really are. They really are neat. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of other um, things that will be coming uh, with the release of Nubia. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be able to talk about them uh, in some more detail. Uh, a little bit later, watch, uh, watch our social media feeds, watch Steam. We'll, we'll have news as soon as we can. Yeah. So um, that is, uh, that's the Nubia side of the equation. It is, yeah. I think I've showed you kind of my, my strategy. So one, uh, one final point. Uh, mm -hmm. to make sure of that it is important to your strategy. Um, like I said, you get settlers from the mostly the civics tree. There's also a technology tree, which we haven't shown yet, but right. um, this is also custom. Um, for me, archery is going to be very important because that's where the Patati Archer happens. Um, but medicine will also give me two free settlers in my capital. It doesn't yes. lead anywhere else, but that will help get me my, my final cities. Swordsmen are up here, um, and then it caps off at future tech in the medieval era. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but 
uh, if you count the settlers that you get uh, between the one you start with and the and the ones that you get in the tech and civics trees, it adds up to six. Um, yes. For winning the scenario, you at least the traditional seven. way, you need seven. Uh, you need several te seven temples of Amun. So um, you're going to need to go to war, and uh, perhaps against the city state, perhaps against uh, you know the evil Egyptians. Um, but yeah, uh, there will be some conquest involved. And um, after talking with our um, our testers, our testing team, Carl yeah. included, um, he wanted to point out, um, again, this is a head-to-head -head scenario and it's a lot of fun with other human players too. Um, and something that we found um, as we play tested this is that there's a lot of really cool strategies. Like in my strategy in this game is Nubia. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't design this scenario myself, but playing it, you know, I really like the builder aspect of it. I really like using Nubia's bonuses, but there are much more aggressive strategies out there as well. You can take your Patati archers and march right up to Thebes and try for basically a military victory. Because if, um, if the other player can't build seven temples because you know they don't have any cities left, then right. you kind of win by default. So yes. that is another way to go about it. And there are certain builds, certain uh, improvements and units that will really help with that. So that's um, a lot of really rich uh, strategic space for players to discover. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I remember playing as Egypt, there were a bunch of different directions I could have gone. I tried to just kind of keep Nubia at an arm's length. Um, how did you end up winning when you were playing as this? Um, so I was definitely going for the seven, um, the seven, uh, temples. temples. Yeah. And I believe I, I captured one of the city states. I forget which one. It might've been one of these off here. Like mm -hmm. these, these guys are great early on, uh, because of the culture and the, and the faith bonus. But, um, you know, if you're able to, you know, by the end of the game, you conquer them, uh, for winning the game. Cause you know, t two culture a turn isn't going to help you as much in right. a later game. Um, so yeah, I took a seventh uh, city uh, from a city state, and I was able to finish it out that way. Gotcha. So, um, so yeah, how did you? So your game is uh, right before you were able. To yeah, play. yeah. Let me load it up real. Actually, go ahead and all right. Bring up the menu, and, and we'll load it up real fast. All right. So, Pedopatra. Pedopatra. <laughs> all right. I'll pass this over your way. Thank you very much. So somebody was asking if you can build a navy to charge up the river. Yes. Um, in fact, having a galley on the Nile is, is a pretty effective way to keep barbarians from crossing and to take city states as well, too. And that formed a, uh, an important part of, of the strategy that I did uh, for this as well, too. So this is, uh, this is the mighty Egyptians um, and their unhappy cities because as far as I'm concerned, my citizens exist to serve me and the god Amun and everybody else can just go to whatever. So uh, <laughs> we're right about, so you notice I conquered the city-state of On. Yeah. Um, the pyramids are now mine. Right. I also took Shadet and then uh, Sharuan, uh, which was a scientific city-state, had actually been taken by one of the invaders. And uh, I came back and captured that later on. Mm -hmm. And that ends up being it. But there's Looks something... like you built Jebel Barkal there, too. I built Jebel too. Barkal yeah. right there. So, and I built it to keep it out of the hands of the Nubians. And a Sphinx is there to guard it. <laughs> yes, um, it is. Well, it's it's a, it, you've got all these desert tiles, and there's not a whole lot else you can do uh, to build on it. So here's the Nile Delta. This is um, a, a pretty cool spot as well, too. Uh, you could probably get some good city action going up on this side as well. It felt a little bit far away, and then there were all these city-states that had already settled there that I simply reconquered them and added them back to the glory of the Egyptian Empire. So we'll go down to here. Um, I, I don't think you, I think you missed one there. <laughs> no, no, they were they were allowed to live out of a out of a surplus of generosity. Is that the Medjay unit that you have? Uh, yeah, so I do have there? a Medjay. Let's let's move this guy out so you can get a chance to see him. He's uh, protecting his holy site. Yeah. yeah, they're they're pretty cool looking. I like the way they came out. That's a neat that's a neat unit. But here you can see the custom art for the holy site. Um, and this is a fully developed one. It's got the obelisk, it's got the shrine, it's got the temple to Amun. Um, it turned out pretty well. So yeah. this, is, uh, this is a city that's doing pretty decently. But I want to come up here to uh, Sharuan, which is kind of interesting. So you'll notice we have a uh, Spearman of Macedon uh, that's come through here. So the DLC4 uh, scenario has bled over a little bit into this. <laughs> it's invaded the DLC5 scenario. DLC5 <laughs> scenario. So um, this city-state of Biblos uh, was here. Um, it was a uh, uh, mercantile city-state. It was a, was a good trading partner. Uh, the Persians under uh, had come in and were trying to take it 
Um, they fought off the Assyrians. There's still Assyrian units bumming around in the wilderness somewhere. And uh, there was this, this big Persian army trying to take it. And I sent my elite chariot army up into this part of, of uh, the, the Jordan and what's modern day Syria, I guess, uh, to, to fight things off. And, um, and keep the city state independent. Yeah, for your I, I trading, was great. Yeah. So the, the, the Persians were moving in to take it from all sides. Um, my chariot army came in and broke up the Persian army. I was doing great. And then all of a sudden Alexander invaded. And this whole <laughs> big area was full of, of Macedon units and my chariots weren't able to disengage in time. But what ended up happening was it left Sharuan open, basically. Mm. Um, and Alexander sent an invasion army down here. I, did, I had to rush uh, guards up there. So this archer had been just bumming around for a while. And you can see he's literally the only thing between here and Oblivion. Mm. If but, only you um, had the better Patati archers, I think it'd work out. Much better I don't for know. You. I think it worked out just fine. Yeah, fine. But you, uh, you have a great general there. That seems. I to do be have a great too. general. So great general, as uh, if you're playing as Egypt, that is one of the events that will happen. Uh, Horemheb will show up and help out, and then he's uh, he's buffing all of the combat units. Plus ten. Yeah, that's yeah. that's more than base game. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite a bit. Uh, is the unique holy site district being put into the main game? No, it's just for this scenario. Yeah, the buildings and their effects are quite different. Yep. And uh, yeah, the, the art is kind of like specifically for the era of the scenario. Whereas the holy site and all the districts in the base game uh, will sort of update as the eras continue um, to match the sort of um, time, time frame that you're playing in. So uh, we don't port them over to the, it's kind of like a scenario specific thing. Mm -hmm. And we were able to elaborate on their appearance because of that. So somebody's asking, on this scenario, does the AI get settlers on higher difficulty? No. I don't believe so, no. no it's they, yeah, they only come from the tech and civics trees. Right. So That's a big, important part of the mechanics. Which, speaking of, this is another. So down here in the territory adjacent to Nubia, um, I had a scout out exploring, and I had found a whole bunch of units that had been captured by the barbarians, including a settler, a Nubian oh. settler. <laughs> and I That's one way him, to do it. <laughs> and I ran over, and I just settled a city you that stole I didn't need a very valuable settler. Just because I am that kind of that's pretty pharaoh. devious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's good to be the pharaoh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. What uh? What are the religious beliefs that you picked up? Um. And what, what's your government see. layout? My government layout, uh, I hadn't been optimizing it. So um, I took God of War, which actually turned out to be pretty good because I was constantly at war oh, in the northern yeah. part area. And, yeah, that's um, a good one for Egypt. Yeah, and the last time I played a scenario, I got I got used to um, pounding on people as Alexander to yeah. making the science out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your lunch money, nerd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did get, uh, I did get oh, Anubis, I so, so that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, and oh, I was thinking yeah, about that one too. Yeah. yeah. But most importantly, the faith reduction of costs on faith purchases means yes. that you get a discount on building those uh, buildings. You're 30% closer to victory. For, yeah. Which, victory is 30% cheaper. Which made it, it. Which made it right. <laughs> so by the end, I'm cranking 146 uh, faith per turn because I got wow. some pretty well situated holy yeah. sites. Yeah. I got lots of it. Um, just crank out that last temple to Amun, and I win a religious victory. Where is the last temple going to be placed down? Oh, like, oh um, yeah, the, where we were before. Oh, it's so up here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, you gotta... can see that's the only one that doesn't have the, yeah. the temple on it. Cool. Um, but we'll build it there, and then you'll see. Why isn't Ed on the stream today? Ed's on vacation. He is. He's yeah. playing board games. Yeah. He's at a board gaming convention board somewhere. Board gaming convention. Yeah. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Ed is at a board I know. I wouldn't so expect that, but yeah. somehow it's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's a quick look at, uh, at the, the Nubia DLC that will be coming out fairly soon. Uh, both the, uh, the Civ um, and its abilities and uh, the uh, Gifts of the Nile scenario that goes with it. Yeah. So and we've Jebel got... Barkal, the Wonder as well. That's right. Um, so for those of you guys who are building uh, Petra-focused desert uh, cities, Jebel Barkal is another good one to add to that particular arsenal. Make, yeah. those, make those desert tiles uh, blossom. Yeah, so get Uluru, Petra, as Nubia, and yeah. then also put their bubble on there. Yeah, exactly. It'd be kind of ridiculous. And post those pictures, because we'd love <laughs> to see those. Yeah. So uh, um, we will have more information on things that will be coming out with the release of this, uh, this DLC soon. So stay focused on our uh, Twitter and Facebook accounts. Watch for us on Steam. Thanks for tuning in today and uh, taking a look at the stream. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us.